a lot of people ask about and are concerned with their art style, the visual identifier for their artistic work. I'm here to tell you there's something else you should be worried about instead. So depending on where you are in your artistic growth, you'll likely fall on a spectrum between two different stages. In the first stage, you don't really know how to draw at all, or haven't been spending much time doing it. Maybe this scenario is familiar to you. Ugh, drew another really bad hand. I don't know how to draw hands. That finger looks like a porpoise. Wait, maybe that's my style. Yeah, I'll be the dolphin finger weird hands guy. That's my thing. I'm gonna be so famous. In reality, all that's happened here is that you don't, and still don't, know how to draw hands. All of those grandiose thoughts about style is just your brain reconciling with the uncomfortable fact that you need to practice more. I've said this a lot of times before, but style, or stylization, is drawing something the wrong way, oftentimes intentionally. And the thing is, unless you're aiming for absolute photorealism, something is going to show through in your drawing, your rendering, the shapes or proportions that you use, some amount of style is going to show anyway. The key though, is that learning to draw something the right way first is the best way to intentionally draw it the wrong way later. Someone who's already studied drawing hands the right way is going to execute on dolphin fingers a lot better than someone who hasn't. Now that concept may seem basic, but someone should tell your mind that. Learning and growing in art can feel uncomfortable and difficult, but the good thing is that if it's making you feel uncomfortable, that's a good sign that you're growing. So keep at it. I want an excuse to come outside and film, but I'm stuck directly in between autumn and winter. This is neither of those. It's just wet leaves. In this second stage on the spectrum though, you're a little bit more developed, maybe an intermediate artist, and you're wondering about style. What makes my work any different from someone else's work? This is where artistic voice comes into play. See, where an art style could be just a superficial veneer that goes over top of your work, artistic voice is something that emanates from a deep core part of you. So let's go up this metaphorical hill that's real and try and figure out what your artistic voice is. There are a number of things that inform your artistic voice, and I think it's important that you start recording what those things are, whether it's in a list form, if it's a Pinterest board, a collage, anything where you can create a tangible version of your voice and refer back to it later. An artistic voice is sometimes called the why. It's the core motivating factor for why you make stuff. Now, chances are you didn't get into making art because of the secure financial future that it provides the way that a doctor or lawyer would. Instead, you probably share the sentiment of the writer Charlotte Bronte. I am just going to write because I cannot help it. Among the things that can inform your artistic voice are things that you like. Movies, comics, games, other artists' work, people, places, trees, weather, any kind of subject matter. But you're going to need to go a little bit deeper than that. One of the most powerful influences on your artistic voice comes from your early life and your experiences and preferences from when you were a kid. There is a pure and unadulterated quality to childhood and you're gonna wanna pull on that. Now this isn't just the media that you liked as a kid, but experiences, a favorite trip that you went on, memory of family members, a favorite animal. It doesn't all have to be good stuff either. Beyond those things are a core motivating set of feelings. What drives you to make stuff? What kind of feeling or aesthetic do you want to generate when people see your work? What story do you want to tell? What message do you have? What lesson do you want to teach? All of this stuff takes serious time and thought to figure out, but don't discount it. Record it and refer back to it when you can. And since we change a little bit throughout our lives, don't feel like this set of influences, likes, and reasons are all set in stone. Developing your artistic voice can be a slow process, but every time you make something, check to see if it does one of these three things. One would be it doubled down on your artistic voice. That's forward movement. The second would be it was kind of stuck in the middle because you were trying something new or just weren't really feeling it, that's stagnant with no motion. The third one, which is kind of the worst, is you made something because it's what you thought everyone else would want you to make. You pandered or made something disingenuous. When you do something like that, just know that it's counterintuitive and you're working in reverse. If you center yourself with an artistic voice, one that you are aware of, all of your concerns and worries about style will fall into place. And the thing about having a clearly defined artistic voice is that it makes it that much easier to find your style. 
Here's the thing about literal voices. Some people have just naturally good tone and resonance to their voice. Others can talk really fast without tripping over their words, like a rapper or an auctioneer. Some people are good singers, and through vocal training can become great singers. But the most important thing is that we all have our own voice that's unique. So instead of trying to sound like someone else, stop and listen to yourself. If this video is helpful for you, please give it a like and share it with a friend if you think it'll help them too. I make new videos every week on YouTube, so subscribing lets you know when they're made available. My Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon are all Bagel Denizen, and you'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.